how to pay off your mortgage early without cutting back on your expenses or making more money. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Sam Kwok here, one of the Kwok Brothers, and I'm a certified credit counselor. And in this video, I wanna show you how to pay off your mortgage faster and early, typically within five to seven years on average. And this is a strategy that my clients have been using for the past two to three years and they've been seeing tremendous amount of results. So let's go ahead and dive right in. But before we do, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you wanna learn more about paying off your mortgage faster, learning how to invest in real estate, as well as getting the latest updates on financial news. And also be sure to stick around to the very end because I am gonna give away a free calculator where you can go and punch in your own numbers to see how much time and money that you can potentially save by using this very strategy. So let's go and start with what's wrong with your current mortgage. Why not just refinance or why not just go and pay off an existing loan the way it is. And you might also be thinking, Sam, why not we just throw extra money into the mortgage and pay that sucker off early? Well, with this strategy, you can actually potentially save even more money and time than just paying extra into the mortgage. So let's go and first talk about what's wrong with your mortgage. And I wanna start that by withdrawing what's called the amortization chart. What you guys are looking at here is the amortization chart. And from left to right, this represents the amount of time that you spend paying off your mortgage. So if you have a 30 year mortgage right now, this is where you start at your mortgage and this is the payoff period. So when you reach 30 years, you're done, right? The up and down, the vertical line represents your monthly payment that you make every month. So hypothetically speaking, just for illustration purposes, let's say your monthly payment is $1,000 a month, okay? Now, what I'm gonna draw are two lines the red line here represents the amount of interest you pay over time in proportion to your monthly payment. And uh, the blue line represents the principal that you pay in relationship to how much you pay out of the $1,000. So what happens is, beginning part of your mortgage, vast majority, the $1,000, vast majority of the $1,000 goes towards directly to interest. So this portion right here, all of this goes directly towards the interest. Now, as you get to the second half of your mortgage on a 30 year amortization, vast majority goes to paying the principal. So let me go ahead and label this correctly so that you guys understand what's going on. So the blue represents principal and the red stands for interest. So with the fact that you're paying most of the interest towards the beginning of the interest, this is known as the front loaded interest zone. Okay, all the interest is loaded on the front half of the interest, this is why we call the front loaded interest. And one of the reasons why I suggest individuals not to refinance is anytime you refinance, you reset this amortization schedule where we go back to the front loaded interest zone. So here are two likely scenarios that make the 30 year mortgage a terrible, terrible plan and why you should use this particular strategy that I'm about to show you guys through the rest of the video. Now what happens is when you get to about seven to 10 year mark, Okay, typically two things happen. The first scenario is that most of us today typically move because of job relocation, or we downsize, or we find another home. It's more frequent now these days that we will likely move than ever before. So when you go and sell your house and you buy a new house and you get a new mortgage, what happens is you don't necessarily get to continue the progress that you have made with this amortization schedule. So what happens is if you get a new mortgage, start all the way from the beginning and back to the front loaded interest zone if you're on a 30 year amortization. Now, the other scenario is that you refinance. Maybe you get persuaded by a banker or a mortgage broker that tells you, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, you've been doing a phenomenal job paying for the last seven to 10 years. Let's go and get you come back in and save you some little bit of money, quote unquote, and refinance into a lower interest rate. So by refinancing, you may think that you're saving money because your monthly payment goes down, maybe perhaps down to $900 a month, and you're thinking, hey, that's 100 bucks that we saved every month, therefore we can use that $100 for something else. Actually, that's the same tactic that car salesmen use to try to think that you are getting a deal when you're really not, when you look at the, the full amortization as to what you're paying. So you think you're saving money because the monthly payment went down by 900, but think again, when you refinance, you go back all the way to the beginning, to the front loaded interest zone. So if you made it to the seven to 10 year mark, you might as well just continue down the road of getting picking up more principal as you go versus going back to the front loaded interest zone where vast majority of your payment will go directly towards 
interest. This is the main cause as to why most Americans today are not unable to pay off their mortgage because of the likely scenarios that come about. Either they sell their house or they refinance. So here's the other plan and the other strategy that I want to suggest. And this is something that a lot of my clients are using right now to paying off their mortgage even quickly. So I want to introduce you to a new product of banking called a home equity line of credit. And home equity line of credit is often abbreviated into a HELOC. So you may have heard this term before, a HELOC, a home, home equity line of credit. This is not the same thing as a he loan, a home equity loan, which is a home equity loan is simply a second mortgage. It's amortized. It works the same way just like in any other mortgage does. But with the home equity line of credit, think of this like a credit card. So let's go and draw the difference between a home equity line of credit versus a traditional mortgage, a HELOC versus a mortgage. There we go. Oh, and a little fun, interesting fact. If you notice the word mortgage, the prefix of this word is mort, which is a French word for death. And the gauge is also the word related to pledge or promise. So this is literally called death pledge. So you can already see here the mortgage is not the best way to go. It's basically a pledge that you'll pay off the loan until you die. So that's a little fun fact that you, you may have not, not noticed with the English word there, but uh, that's a little fun fact. So let's go and split the difference between a mortgage versus a HELOC. With a mortgage, this is closed ended, meaning once you make your payment to the mortgage, it's gone, it's poof. You can't get that back unless you refinance. And we're talked about why refinancing is a bad, bad thing. With a HELOC, it's open-ended. So think of, think of it like a credit card where you make a payment to your credit card, but it allows you to draw the money back out when you actually need it. So closed-ended versus open-ended, whereas a closed-ended, you make a payment, it's gone, you can't access it. With the open-ended line of credit, you can always pay back and reuse. Now, when it comes to the interest rate, both mortgage and HELOCs can be fixed rate. So that's a little myth that a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think that the HELOC is always variable, which is not always true. So that it comes fixed and variable, same thing with the mortgage, right? You can get a fixed rate 30 year mortgage and also you can get an ARM, right? An adjustable rate mortgage, all right? And also the interest rate, now people think that with the HELOC, the interest rate is often higher. That is true, but you can also get what's called the first lien HELOC, which I've seen as low as 2.75% to 4.5%. With the mortgage, you can typically get a 1.99, depending on the rate as well as what the index is being used, uh, all the way to 5%, anywhere between that. So you can see here, guys, is that the interest rates are pretty comparable. Both are fixed and variable, but the only difference that I'm seeing here is that mortgage is closed-ended and the HELOC is open-ended. So just remember the fact that it's open-ended. This is very important. If, if you forget anything else, make sure you remember that the HELOC is open-ended. So here's how the strategy actually works. Now, there are seven different versions of this strategy, but I'm going to give you guys a quick summary of the one particular version that I personally love when it comes to this very strategy. So we start off with a mortgage, okay? And let's say we have a mortgage balance of $250,000, okay? Now, the one particular version of the strategy is to completely replace this mortgage with a home equity line of credit. So think of it kind of like a refinance, but you're not refinancing to another 30 year mortgage, but you're simply refinancing into a home equity line of credit. Now, the way that this works is that HELOC would be a first lien HELOC to where now replaces the existing mortgage. The existing mortgage was on the first lien position, but now that you got a HELOC to completely replace your mortgage to pay it off, your HELOC is now carrying all the existing balance that was once part of the mortgage, thus, thus the HELOC becomes a first lien. Now, there is an alternative version where you make what's called a chunking payment, where you have a second lien HELOC, HELOC, on top of your existing mortgage, so you don't replace your mortgage, you just get another HELOC, you're making chunk payments, but I wanna first show you how this works with the first lien HELOC, okay? So from there, once you replace your mortgage, you're gonna go and dump all of your income, and yes, all of your income and savings, into the home equity line of credit. Now, you might be saying, Sam, why in the world are we doing that? That sounds silly. What, what are we doing here? Now, what we wanna do is we wanna drive down what's called the average daily balance of the home equity line of credit. Let's say our income for this example is $10,000. So what we've done is we take $10,000 of our income, put it on our first lien HELOC of $250,000 balance. Now, it's going to be 240 instead of 
a 250 balance from our mortgage. Now what happens is that you owe interest based on the $240,000 calculation instead of a $250,000 balance calculation. Now you're saying, Sam, we still have to pay our expenses. I mean, we put all of our income to the HELOC, that's great. We've done a significant principal chunk out of the mortgage, but we still have to pay for our expenses. Now, one thing that a lot of people do with this strategy is that they use a credit card to do all their expenses, like groceries, gas, uh, diapers if you got kids, right? Entertainment. Also, they leave some room for a chance to smash the like button on this video, right? Go and click the like button on this video to help us out with our YouTube algorithm. So they use a credit card to do all their expenses. Now, what's unique about a credit card is that anytime you buy something with a credit card, you typically get anywhere between 21 to 30 days of a grace period where you don't owe any interest. So the interest doesn't accrue on any of these purchases until the next billing cycle. So here's what we're doing, and this is a hypothetical situation, this is more of an illustration, but what the individuals using this strategy will do is they'll try to get the $10,000 income into the first lien HELOC on the first day of the month. So let me use a different color. So first day, and what they'll do is they'll leave the money and the income on the first lien HELOC, park the money into the first lien HELOC while they do all their expenses on the credit card and they pay off the credit card on the last day of the month. So let's say 30th day of the month, they pay off their credit card using the funds out of the home equity line of credit. And what that looks like is they'll draw the money out into a checking account, and then from the checking account, they'll pay the credit card. That's typically how the mechanism works. Now, what we've done there as far as what we've accomplished with the interest side is that we left this home equity line of credit balance sitting low by $10,000 for 30 days. Now, if you know anything about the average daily interest calculation with the home equity line of credit, what the banks do is that they'll take a look at your balance each and every day and calculate the interest based on the balance of that specific day. So if today was $240,000, they'll calculate the interest for that specific day on that $240,000. Next day, if it's still sitting at $240,000, they'll calculate the average daily interest based on that specific amount. So if we're keeping the balance at $240,000 for a whole entire month, for, from the first to the 30th day of the month, guess what happens to the interest amount that we have accrued on the home equity line of credit? It's significantly lower how we just draw the money out for expenses directly from the home equity line of credit. This is why we're using a, a credit card to sort of park our expenses until we're ready to completely pay it off at the end of the month. Bottom line, the trick is that we're trying to keep the HELOC and the credit card from accruing any interest on our expenses on a given monthly basis. Another thing that a lot of the users of the strategy do is they also throw their savings in there into the home equity line of credit balance as well. Now the argument is if you leave your money in your savings account, I mean, what is it paying you? Like 1%, 2% maybe at most? So one or 2% annual percentage yield, right, from your savings account. But with the HELOC, a home equity line of credit, you can get anywhere between 275 to, let's say, 5% of interest rate by throwing that same balance, same amount that you had in your savings account into the home equity line of credit. Now you're seeing a reduction of the, the principal balance, thus now you're saving anywhere between 2.75% to 5%, depending on what the interest rate on the home equity line of credit is. So instead of thinking about earning interest, now we're cutting the principal balance back down to where we're saving interest by whatever the interest rate on the HELOC is. So that's the first lien HELOC. If we're using a second lien HELOC, it's very similar, but we're just doing a smaller chunk at a time. There we go, maybe we do 20, we throw $25,000 into the mortgage principal balance, and then we're pretty much doing the same thing. The income comes into the second lien using a credit card, you guys get it. So that's the gist of the strategy. There are seven different ways to doing this. And of course, I don't have all the time in the world to cover it. And depending on your situation, this strategy can definitely be modified and changed uh, depending on your personal finance and your, your situation. So like I promised, I wanna give you guys the calculator where you can go and punch in your own numbers to see how much time and money you can potentially save. Go and download that and I'll go and throw the link up here on our whiteboard. Chop my mortgage. Dot com. If you go to chopmymortgage.com, it would actually redirect you to acceleratedbanking.com. We just thought chopmymortgage.com seems more memorable. So acceleratedbanking.com. In fact, that's what the strategy is called, accelerated banking. Sometimes people call it velocity banking. Sometimes people call it uh, the pill method or uh, mortgage acceleration. Uh, we like to call it accelerated banking because we're accelerating 
uh, your mortgage payoff as fast as possible. So go to chatmymortgage.com, download your free copy of the calculator and punch in your numbers. And what I want you to do after you download the calculator, I'm gonna go ahead and actually invite you to a free class where I spend about 40 minutes diving in, uh, talking about what happens if there's a recession, why is this better than uh, doing extra payments into the mortgage, uh, what happens if you live paycheck to paycheck or maybe you have inconsistent income. So I go deeper into answering some of the questions that you may have um, and you can get those answers in the web class after you go and download the calculator and I'll also leave the calculator link down below in the video description so that you can just click on it and it'll take you right there. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel as well as smash the like button if you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in another video.